starts right now. Long lines to be tested for COVID has local health officials opening new locations to meet demand. We will tell you where those new locations are opening. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, another cold start to your day. We're at 44 degrees, but it got pretty nice yesterday. It really did warmed up nicely. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, January 6th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, definitely grab a jacket, but later on, uh, not too bad. Well, there's another front that is due in our area, and if I remember the timing right, it might be today. Mike's got more on that. It will be today, so it is. It's not going to be as warm as yesterday. Yeah, mid right. and upper 70s in a lot of places. Uh, it's going to warm up midday and then cool down. Cool down. So it's kind of like jacket on the bookend. <laughs> Midday, be prepared. Will, midday, yeah, midday will be uh, mid 60s and then later on this afternoon temperatures are going to be dropping down through the 50s and by dinner time it's going to be kind of chilly out there and also very windy. This morning we are starting off with some fog down here along the, the coastal plain and there is a dense fog advisory and it's um, B Live Oak as well as uh, Carnes counties up until eight o'clock this morning. Elsewhere things are looking pretty good. Freezing out there in portions of the hill country 43 here in town. We still have fairly dry air so I think we dropped down a few more degrees going for the upper 30s before it's all said and done. Mountain cedar did go up from the previous day's reading yesterday. Same thing with mold. Mountain cedar on the high side at 2630. And uh, this morning we're going to drop down to 39 here in town. Of course, freezing in parts of the hill country. By noon, you won't need a jacket. We're going to be up in the mid 60s. But then by later on this afternoon after school, right around 55 degrees, northerly wind 15 to 25 miles per hour, and we continue to drop down from there. And yes, we are looking at another freeze. Does that then stick around into the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thanks, Mike. Happening today, city officials are calling on other city leaders to help meet the demand for COVID testing here in San Antonio. Mayor Ron Nirenberg has expressed his concern regarding the rapid spread of the Omicron variant and the real likelihood that city services like police and fire response will soon feel the effects of increasing case numbers. That's why Metro Health, Community Labs, and Alamo Colleges are collaborating to open three new COVID testing sites. Officials with Community Labs say they will operate testing sites at Palo Alto College, St. Phillips College, and the Alamo College's District Support Operations Building. But the sites will launch on different days. Later this morning, city leaders, along with officials from Metro Health and Community Labs, will be holding a press conference. Officials will elaborate on details about those new testing sites, in particular, when they will officially open and their hours of operation. The press conference scheduled at 9 this morning. We'll have the very latest on this right here on KSAT 12 and online at KSAT.com. Turning to the pandemic nationally, a major decision overnight to greenlight more vaccine booster shots. It comes as more schools cancel in-person classes due to safety concerns. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, more children are now eligible for COVID vaccine booster shots. The CDC giving the final go ahead last night for kids as young as 12 to get another shot, just as a surge of infections disrupts schools nationwide. We are going to fight to get our kids back in in-person learning. Chicago schools canceling classes again today after the teachers union refused to return to the classroom, citing a lack of testing and accusing the city of having no safety plan. If you want to get us back into the schools quicker, um, provide testing. We're trying to be practical for what makes the most sense for our district. COVID causing school staffing shortages everywhere. In Boston, the superintendent stepped in to teach fourth grade. I jumped into gear and said, I'll clear my calendar and I'll go over and teach a fourth grade class. The U.S. Education Secretary last night insisting that in-person learning is safe. We have better tools now to keep our schools safe including mitigation strategies that we know work. Uh, they work before we had vaccines. In the meantime, stricter safety measures are coming to Southern California. Employers in Los Angeles County will soon be required to provide medical grade masks like the N95 to anyone working indoors. It comes as a testing site in Los Angeles confirms a case of so-called flu Rona, someone infected with both the flu and COVID. You know, it's not new that two viruses can infect someone at the same time, although it's not common. If you do get two viruses in one, which again is rare, you will be protected if you're vaccinated. Meanwhile, COVID continues to take a toll on the entertainment industry. The Grammy Awards have now been postponed indefinitely. Monaco Saramdi, ABC News, New York. A man is dead this morning after falling into a volcano in Hawaii. Rangers say he fell from a closed area in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on Sunday. 
The 75-year-old's body was located about 100 feet below the crater rim near a viewing area at Kilauea Volcano, and crews had to use a helicopter to recover his body on Monday. The Geological Survey considers Mount Kilauea the most dangerous volcano in the country. In Vancouver, storms have turned streets into ponds. Storm drains overwhelmed. The spokesperson of the city says the city's stormwater operations team had a rehab project in the works for the old drain field, but the freezing temperatures put all of that on hold. 435, about 43 degrees. And still ahead, how to pass the time in isolation. Some clever ideas on ways to recover without being totally cut off from everyone. San Antonio Spurs get a much needed win on the road in Boston. It was a close one, but heck, we'll take it. We'll have some highlights. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide this morning. There's a look there at I-10 at De Zavala. Things are moving there. And I-10 at Frio. Not a whole lot of people out there, but things look okay right now. And outside with live cam. Yeah, be careful out there. If you're still suffering from allergies, try to avoid being outdoors at all. There's a ton of stuff in the air. We'll be right back. You're watching GMSA. We are just getting started. There's your alarm clock. Spurs fans excited to have DeJounte Murray back in the lineup on the road against Boston last night, sidelined because of COVID protocols. Spurs making it look good early. Devin Vassell putting up the first seven points for the Spurs. DeJounte makes his first shot, a 15-foot footer keeps. Then check this out. Vassell right there, he takes a wide open lane and goes for the jam. Game tied 30 after one. Spurs pull away in the second. Jock Landell gets the three, and then Murray's able to feed Landell under the basket. Score and the foul. The three-point play gives the Silver and Black a six-point lead. The cell nailed a corner three, and then the Spurs go up by two going into halftime. Second half, Derek White from downtown giving the Spurs a one-point lead, sparking a run for the Spurs. White sinks a 12-footer, and San Antonio picks up a six-point lead. Boston still in the mix. Cut the Spurs lead to three going into the fourth. Game getting down to the wire. White spins, stops, and puts up the jumper. Spurs up by six. They were able to hang on. They pick up a win on the road in Beantown. They win this one 99-97. to 97. At the end of the day, they know I take care of my body and take care of myself. So I think uh, we trust each other. Uh, and they know I'm going to tell them if something hurts or I'm tired. So, you know, I just was out there trying to compete at a high level and help my team win the game. So, you know, I was feeling good and I told them I was feeling good. Spurs continue their road trip. They take on the Philadelphia 76ers tomorrow night, 6 o'clock our time at Wells Fargo Arena. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, COVID protocol has the Cowboys concerned. Cowboys star Micah Parsons now on the COVID reserve list and his status for Saturday's regular season finale against the Eagles in Philly is very much in question. The defensive rookie of the year front runner has 13 sacks this season and his first rookie was 75 tackles and 10 plus sacks in the last 25 seasons. Parsons apologized to his teammates and fans on social media, saying he's saddened by the news and that he feels like he let uh, his team and, and Cowboys Nation down. Parsons says he'll be back better than ever and is going to be more hungry. See you soon. Hashtag Lion. Difficult because, you know, we haven't played together as much as we want. Uh, obviously, we would love to have MG the whole season or, you know, all three of us on the field together the whole season. But obviously, due to injuries, and prayers to my man, MG, praying for a speedy recovery. But, I mean, other than that, we got to go out there and handle business for him or one another, you know, uh, go out there, put our best foot forward and be able to hold it down for the group. On top of Parsons being in question, Dallas won't have their top three wide receivers to end the end season. That includes Michael Gallup, who tore his ACL in the loss against Arizona. So how has it been for the Cowboys not being able to have their top three receivers for most of the season? I guess we'll find out. Yes, we will. <laughs> Time now, 442 and 43 degrees for now. With Omicron surging and flu cases on the rise, you may find yourself stuck at home alone. Coming up, some tips to keep yourself entertained while you're on the road to recovery. Also, could Jelaine Maxwell get a new trial? What's being revealed about a juror that convicted her is coming up. 
Welcome back. It's 445. Lawyers for Ghislaine Maxwell are seeking a new trial after a juror discloses his own sexual abuse. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new questions about the jury that convicted Glenn Maxwell. A juror breaking his silence, reportedly revealing he was one of two jurors who shared personal stories during deliberations of having been sexually abused by someone. I don't want to call her a monster. Um, a predator is the right word. Scotty David, identified by his first and middle name, speaking on camera to the Daily Mail. It satisfies me to know that um, we did our due diligence and that we brought justice for these victims, for these girls who are now women. David reportedly telling the Independent that the jury room went dead silent as he shared his own story. Maxwell's attorneys arguing those statements present incontrovertible grounds for a new trial. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live with our legal analyst, Dan Abrams. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Well, with COVID cases, numbers on a continuous uptick along with flu cases, odds are pretty good that you or someone you know in your family may be finding new ways to keep busy while at home or isolating. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on some ways to pass the time while you get better. <coughs> Sound familiar? Coughs, aches, fever, being sick stinks. But there are some ways to make your at-home recovery a little easier, like binge watching those shows everybody talks about but you missed. With more streaming services than ever, a dedicated streaming player is often the best way to access them, even if you already own a smart TV. They may have features or services that your TV lacks. The Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K Max is $35 and did well in testing. Just because you can't be with your friends in person, you can still hang out. With a gaming console or computer, you can play with friends online. Of course, you'll need a good headset. Look for a headset that is both comfortable and has great sound quality, including the microphone. You also want to decide if you want it to be wired, which is often cheaper, or wireless, which gives you more freedom but can be pricier. For a wired model, the Turtle Beach Recon 50 is affordable, just $25. It got perfect scores for design, sound, and comfort in CR's user study. Want wireless? The $149 Steel Series Arctis 7 scored just as well. And if you need food delivered, you have options. Consumer Reports evaluated people's experiences with the four major food delivery services and found that among these, Postmates was the most prompt. So with good food, entertainment, and friends, being sick can be a little more comfortable. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look outside with Trans Guy. Let's look there at Loop 1604 and Hausman Road. Uh, pretty empty there at I-10 and Days of Zavala, but uh, not too many problems that we can see from these angles. Well, as Mike Osterhage joins us now, Mike, you know the cedar gets me every year, and I take meds every single day to kind of fight all this off. I haven't had major problems this year. I was walking mm. Truman last night uh -oh. and I had a flashlight. And you should have seen all the stuff that was really? passing through that beam of light walking to the mailbox and last night. There's still a ton of stuff. Right. I mean, it's probably dirt and dust, but also- But that a, probably affected a, you mentally. <laughs> yes, I, was, yeah. I wa went inside immediately washed up, but yeah, there's a ton of stuff in the air right well, now. I showed the graphic yesterday and I'll, I'll show it again later on this morning. We're, you know, not even to really the midpoint of the season right. yet so and then of course on the heels of that is the oak pollen and that's always fun when everything has that nice little coating of yellow dust on it so all right well other than that uh, nice morning it is cool out there beautiful view of downtown we do have some fog down here along the coastal plain now not as much right now as what it was yesterday there is a little bit being reported around uh, say Seguin but we do have the dense fog advisory in effect down here along the coastal plain it does include Carnes County Live Oak B Victoria, and this is up until 8 o'clock this morning. So as we continue on, as temperatures maybe drop down a couple of more degrees because we've got some clear skies and dry air, light wind right now, those are the ingredients to get uh, some fog. We also have a slight bit of a wind chill here in town. Temperature is up in the low 40s for the time being, but wind chill feels like 39, 33 right now at Port SA. And yeah, you want a jacket, obviously. Now, as far as temperatures, we're going to be peaking right about noon. This computer model has us uh, up to about 60, I think 65 or so. But then by later on this afternoon, we are going to continue to drop down as the front 
front moves on through here and temperatures will drop down pretty quickly and even by dinner time continuing to drop into well got the upper 30s once again in portions of the hill country and that cold air continues to filter on in here and we're going to be down to freezing again tomorrow morning but then it just does another complete flip flop and we get the warm air coming back in here fairly quickly uh, overnight. As a matter of fact, temperatures tomorrow will be right around low 50s and then they're pretty much going to be holding steady overnight into Saturday. Nothing showing up on the uh, satellite picture as of right now, but then you go right up to the north and there's all the activity. A lot of snow. They're looking forward to another uh, kind of a nasty snowstorm off along the uh, eastern seaboard. But notice how most everything is sliding straight west to east. That's the kind of zonal pattern that we are in right now. We are going to get a little taste of this really cold stuff, but I mean, geez, they've had just ridiculously cold temperatures and wind chill temperatures that are 40 below zero is what it feels like right now in Bismarck, even Wichita, eight below zero. Like I said, we get a quick little taste of that, but it doesn't last all that long. So it'll just be basically this afternoon and tomorrow. Then we go right back into the uh, kind of warm, humid conditions actually for the weekend. 65 degrees today at noon, lots of sunshine out there, and then a high temperature, excuse me, then an afternoon temperature. 65 is the high, 55 by later on this afternoon, and much colder even in the uh, hill country. And this is going to be you know, four or five o'clock by dinner time, it'll be even colder than that. So temperatures will drop fairly quickly. And then tomorrow we start off at freezing, get up to the low fifties. We'll have a lot of clouds late tomorrow evening. A couple of sprinkly showers going to be possible and into the first part of the day on Saturday. 20% chance for a few showers here and there. I think we see a little bit more sunshine later in the day on Sunday. I look at that low temperature on Sunday, 60. So really humid, another front for next week. Okay, and real quick before we move on, two winners won the big jackpot Powerball last night, winning tickets sold in California and Wisconsin. All right, lucky people. 451, <laughs> about 43 degrees. And instead of canceling, the Grammys are postponed. How organizations are trying to save the event in the midst of COVID surging. And welcome back. It's about 454 tonight. ABC premiering the true story of a woman who lost her son that caused the nation to take a real look at hatred in America. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A couple of big entertainment world events scrambling amid COVID-19's Omicron variant surge. The Grammys postponed, moving off its January 31st date in downtown Los Angeles. The Recording Academy and CBS saying in a statement there are just too many risks. And they say a new date is in the works. And the Sundance Film Festival calling an audible moving to a virtual event, canceling all in-person events in Park City, Utah. Sundance kicks off January 20th. Maggie Gyllenhaal getting rave reviews for her directorial and writing feature film debut, The Lost Daughter, which she says is pretty satisfying because when you make a movie, especially your first movie, it's hard to know how people will respond. But she tells me she had a few trusted advisors who told her she was on the right path. Like Emma Thompson, for example, who I admire so much and I know for a long time, when she told me, I'm picking up what you're putting down, I was like, good, I'm done. The Lost Daughter is streaming now on Netflix. Emmett Till, what a fine young man you're becoming. Tonight on ABC, it's the debut of Women of the Movement, a limited series that tells the true story of Mamie Till Mobley and her fight for justice after her 14-year-old son Emmett Till was lynched in Mississippi in 1955. Two episodes air tonight, next week, and the week after. And Oscar-winning actor Eddie Redmayne with a birthday today, he's 40, while Saturday Night Live star Kate McKinnon turns 38. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. And the time now, it's 4.56 and about 43 degrees out there. Our nation remembers the riots at the Capitol. It's been one year today. We take a look back. City leaders are trying to accommodate the high demand for COVID testing, what they're doing to make more testing available. And Transguide right now, a few cars on the roads. It's still awfully early out there, but if you are an early bird commuter, Stephen Cavazos will get you up to speed on what to expect on the highways and byways at the Alamo City. Coming up after the break, we'll be right back. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Today marks a dark chapter in American history. A look back at the riots on Capitol Hill. The demand for COVID-19 testing is increasing as the new Omicron variant places the city in another surge. What both city and health officials are doing to help coming up next. 
And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a chilly start to your day. But Mike was saying you might want to hold on to your jacket. We'll have changes to warmer and then back to cold again. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, January 6, 2022. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, hope you like all the changes. You have a variety of options this week. Uh, yeah, I think Justin yesterday might call this a variable forecast, highly variable forecast. That's appropriate. Yeah, and very, very, very variable. Is that very variable? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like that. Say that, <laughs> that sounds right. fast. Anyway, yes, uh, temperatures are going to be variable all across the board. We uh, start off cool this morning, warm up, cool back down, really cool down, get hotter again, then cool back down. So uh, variable. Yeah, good way to describe it. 42 degrees right now and the dew points at 31, which means we've got relatively very dry air. See that humidity is only at 65 percent, but off to the east, there is a lot more relative humidity and so that's why we are seeing a little bit of fog I'm going to show you that in a second 65 degrees but notice where that is on the graph right there about noon then we go down to 55 and then down to about 50 by dinner time that's here in town so well down in the 40s already by late afternoon in the uh, hill country with that front moving on through here the aquifer dropped down one tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours and the allergens mountain cedar is high that went up from the previous day's reading as did mold although mold is still on the low side all right in and around the metropolitan area we're not dealing with any uh, any fog around here head off to the east along 10 and running into a little bit it's being reported officially as some haze there around Seguin. Then you go further to the east and a lot of fog there along the coastal plain. It's not really as thick. You know, yesterday at this time we had uh, less than a quarter mile visibility right around Gonzales, so it's not as thick yet, but the stage is sort of set for some of that fog. So we do have a dense fog advisory in our southeastern counties, uh, Carnes, B, uh, Live Oak counties up until 8 o'clock this morning. So throughout the rest of today, we are going to warm up to the mid 60s. Probably won't need a jacket at noon, but you will later on this afternoon. The front moves through. It's going to be windy today and will be mid to lower 50s here in town, 40s in the hill country by late in the day around dinner time. And then tomorrow we do start off with another freeze here. Only make it to the low 50s. A lot of clouds will have clear skies starting off and then the clouds move on in here. A couple of showers going to be possible later on tomorrow night into Basically the first part of the day on Saturday, a few showers around here. Not a great chance of rain. Unfortunately, it's going to be warm this weekend, pretty much warm and humid. And then another front to start off next week. Hopefully maybe some rain into next week. That's just kind of a fingers crossed type situation. Details on the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Empty and quiet, Mike, and that's what we can usually expect this early. Right now, I-10 at Presa. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how our roads are looking for our early morning risers. We have 35 north at Loop 410, 35 at Alamo. Again, quiet start to this Thursday morning. We're not spotting any issues out there, but things to be on the lookout for. We'll take a look at the map right now in just a moment, but uh, you can see that we are seeing a slight slowdown along 30 35 uh, southbound. Not sure exactly what's causing that slowdown just yet, but we do have a, a very slight slowdown also on 1604. That's due to some construction, which we'll get to a little bit later on. But right now we have been off to a pretty green start in the Alamo City, and that's not too bad, especially if you plan on heading out the door in the next few moments. Let's take a look at those inbound times, because if you are out of San Antonio and plan on traveling through the downtown San Antonio area, well, we have those inbound times for you right now. I-10 eastbound 25 minutes from Bernie to downtown 21 southbound. We're looking at 25 minutes at this hour if you're coming in from Bulverde and 26 on 35 southbound coming in from New Braunfels. So not too bad. Again, Thursday morning off to a quiet and great start for our early morning risers. We'll look at more construction spots coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. City of San Antonio adding three new COVID-19 testing sites as infections climb and the demand for testing is even higher. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live this morning. Good morning. When can people start getting tested? Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. At one of the locations as soon as today. Now, this is all in an effort to uh, address and test people at a larger capacity, reduce wait times, and address the increase in new COVID-19 cases caused by the new Omicron variants. We know Mayor Ron Narabang is saying that these three testing sites will be open as soon as possible. The first is opening this morning at Alamo College's District Support Operations Building, just north of downtown. This is all being made possible by a partnership with the City of San Antonio and Community Labs. The Alamo College testing site opens this morning at 8 a.m. and will be open Monday through Friday, 8 to 6 p.m. And the other two locations don't open until tomorrow. 
and Monday. Those will be at Palo Alto College and St. Philip's College. And again, no appointment will be necessary at any of the three sites and testing will be done on a walk-up basis. Metro Health says test results will be available within the 24 hours. Now, Metro Health, along with city officials, will be meeting later this morning around 9. We'll be covering that meeting. You can also live stream the meeting on KSAT.com. Again, we'll be covering that meeting at GMSA at 9. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Three year old Lena Kill has still not been seen for 18 days now. Still no answers. In just a few hours, search crews will resume efforts to find her. Yesterday, an FBI dive team searched a creek about two miles from where she was last seen on December 20th. The lead they followed came up empty. If you have any information, you're urged to call 210 207 7660. There's still a $150,000 reward for information leading to Lena. It's now 5.05. Our country marking one year since the deadly attack on Capitol Hill, a day when a violent mob of pro-Trump protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol complex in what's being described as the worst attack on American democracy since the U.S. Civil War. The U.S. Attorney General is vowing justice will be served to any and all of those involved in the attack. ABC's Aika Jachi has a look at the events today. This morning, a tale of two days. In the weeks after the attack, the Capitol complex was outfitted with armored military vehicles, tall fences, and barbed wire. This time, a more ordinary approach. The temporary fencing that circled the Capitol has not returned. The FBI currently does not have any information about a credible threat. Still, Capitol Police says they'll be ready this time Thank if anything does happen, claiming the department has improved. The events of January 6th did expose critical departmental failures and deficiencies with operational planning, intelligence, staffing, training, and equipment. Today, Democratic lawmakers will host several events commemorating that deadly day. Most Republicans expected to be absent. President Biden also expected to speak. I would expect that President Biden will lay out the significance of what happened at the Capitol and the singular responsibility President Trump has for the chaos and carnage that we saw. A new ABC News Ipsos poll says 72% of Americans believe those involved were threatening democracy. Make no mistake, our democracy was on the brink of catastrophe that day. As for justice, it continues. According to George Washington University, 705 cases have been filed against those related to the attack, and almost 80% were charged in part using evidence from social media accounts. In a rare speech, Attorney General Merrick Garland said the Justice Department will continue to prosecute any and all cases related to the attack. Whether they were present that day, or were otherwise criminally responsible for the assault on our democracy. We will follow the facts wherever they lead. Now, back to the ABC News Ipsos poll, 58% of Americans feel former President Donald Trump bears a great deal or a good amount of responsibility. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And the deputy postmaster general is asking the government for a temporary delay from the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for U.S. Postal Service employees. The mandate requires USPS workers to either be vaccinated or get a weekly test. The deputy postmaster general says the mandate will likely cause many postal employees to quit or be fired. He suggested that with the current supply chain and staffing challenges, the U.S. cannot afford more potential setbacks to our mail delivery system. This morning, people are buzzing about some comments Pope Francis made about people and their pets. Yesterday at the Vatican, the Pope said couples who choose to have pets instead of children Cause a, a quote unquote form of selfishness. He also called the decision a detriment to civilization and claims it leads to the loss of humanity. The pontiff advised couples who cannot biologically have children to consider adoption. It's not the first time he's criticized couples who prioritize pets. He made similar comments back in 2014. And time now, 509 and 43 degrees for now. TikTok doing a relaunch of sorts. What new? Uh, new, what's new with the social media platform is coming up. A face mask like no other. This mask offers a number of features, including making you glow. And outside with live cam, ready for another cold front? Mike says it's on the way, and we have no idea what that'll do to the cedar count, but you can probably guess. A closer look at the weekend forecast coming up as well. Yeah, we are one day closer. You're watching GMSA.
Welcome back in your morning consumer news. Goldman Sachs is predicting the price of Bitcoin could hit $100,000 within five years. It's currently at about $43,000. That's about two thirds of the cryptocurrency's record high in November. Goldman Sachs says it believes digital assets will grow in popularity. It says that could cause the price of Bitcoin rather to more than double. And take a look at this Razer Zephyr Pro. It looks like the original Zephyr with a large glowing design that makes you look like you just stepped into a sci-fi universe. The mask has two large replaceable N95 grade filters on either side to keep you safe from viral, viral droplets as well as silicone exterior designed to be comfortable during use. It also has an internal fan to keep your face cool and it has the company's signature chroma RGB lighting that makes the mask glow virtually any color in the rainbow. So now you will look like Bane from the Batman movies. <laughs> yeah, or some superhero or villain. <laughs> That's okay. right. 513, 43 degrees. We'll be right back. What would you like? I think we... Everything is included. Gonna be... Did you and your husband enjoy your stay? Yes. Visit secretsresorts.com slash love unlimited for a special love unlimited package and savings up to 40%. For intelligent identity protection, Smarter is Identity IQ. Smarter is protecting what's yours with real-time monitoring and alerts for all three credit bureaus. Visit identityiq.com slash smarter and use the promo code on your screen to start your seven-day trial for $1. I'm Vince. I do construction, but in my mind, I'm a professional hip hop dancer. And that's why I only practice my dance moves with Beach Body Super Trainer Sean T. It feels like I'm right there in the class with Sean. It's time to start dancing. Try size free for 14 days. Instagram beginning the rollout of its new chronological feeds. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Instagram coming out with choices. Right now, three different feeds are being tested. Home ranks posts on what you're likely to be interested in. Favorites is for people you care most about. And following is just for accounts you follow. They're expected to roll out by July. And TikTok is testing a new feature similar to Twitter's retweet. The repost button, available to a number of users, allows you to share videos with your friends. And BMW is out with new technology aimed at the indecisive among us. Now on display at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, a car that changes colors from white to gray to black, all at the push of a button. Now the paint is actually an electronic ink similar to what's used in e-readers. So now if you can't remember where you parked your car, just think when you can't remember what color car you're even looking for. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. I don't need more problems finding my car. <laughs> no, thank you. It's an issue? Yeah, well, sometimes. Yeah. Well, kind of be honest, I've never seen you wandering our parking lot. <laughs> no, this is little. I'm talking about Just like a large into the parking lot. Yeah. Okay. This one right. I remember, although some people will park on one end and then walk out the other. I've seen it, that happen. It happens all the time. I see people, you know, a grocery stores have been busy lately over yes. the holidays yes. and, and with the, you know, the run on supplies and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, depending on malls or grocery store parking lots, it's very easy to get lost these days. I think so. I don't think we'll get lost on the roadways <laughs> this morning. Though. No, but I, I definitely have to hop on that bandwagon with you stuff. It's like once you go to the grocery store, I always have to remember the aisle that I park my car. And then after that, it's like, uh, where did I where did I park this guy? But thankfully, we're not seeing any issues like that on the roadway. Then we'd be in big trouble. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here at 35 at Alamo. The morning's getting moving here, but still very quiet. As you can see from these shots at Transguy, there's 35 at New Braunfels. A few folks getting their morning started early with us, so that's great news. If you plan to grab some cup of coffee and get your uh, day going. But 37 at Houston, just again, few folks out there very early on. But some things to be on the lookout for because some of those issues are starting to present themselves. Let's take you right to the map. Uh, assault detected here off I-10 eastbound at Ralph Fair Road. Not caught causing any issues just yet, but we saw a bunch of stalls out there yesterday, so make sure your vehicles are working properly. Let's take a jump over to 1604 because we did have some construction to talk about some sign installations that have led to the full closure of the eastbound loop 1604 flyover ramp to the north and southbound US 281 area. Now traffic in the meantime is being detoured to take the frontage roach that's happening overnight from nine in the evening to five in the morning. That should be wrapping up tomorrow, and if you thought we were done with stalls, unfortunately we're not. We got one more to talk about right over here off loop 1604 east 
eastbound at Pat Booker Road. So we are starting to shape up, get a little bit busier out there, but thankfully the morning is still pretty much off to a green start, guys. How about when you're parked in a parking structure? Oh, he's still with And you hit the key fob to you know lock it and you hear the horn beep. Uh-huh. And it's on a different floor. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you got to take an elevator that, for that. That, yeah. that little device elevators. has helped me. Yeah, yeah, yes. that does that does help the <laughs> people. But, you know, differently, you're like, okay, now I... Am I on Which two? Floor? Am I on four? And you just hear this, this echoey beep off the Yeah, oh, well, I, you know, just a little exercise. Okay, I'm on the wrong floor. Let's try it again. We've <laughs> all been there, Mike. We've all been there. Oh, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right, it is chilly this morning, and we got a lot of clear skies around uh, the metropolitan area, but down to the southeast, we are dealing with some fog. And again, dense fog advisory. Uh, cars kind of, now, even though there's not a lot right now, just be on the lookout. And this is in effect up until 8 o'clock. If you're going down uh, 37, going over 10, you may run into a little bit of that, even in around uh, Seguin. It's reporting at last uh, report, uh, just a little bit of haze out there. Freezing Kerrville Comfort, close to it. Bandera, obviously, in your backyard, maybe freezing. Same thing around Bernie Stage, Ball Verde. 42 here in town. I think we dropped down a few more degrees because we do have fairly dry air right now. And we've got dew points down in the low 30s, even 20s. So real dry air. Not much of a breeze as of right now, so we're going to drop into the upper 30s before it's all said and done. Now, yesterday we did make it up to 77. It was, I mean, it was a beautiful afternoon, and the humidity was still very low. It was really pleasant. Sit outside in the afternoon. It was nice. 82 Catula, Pleasanton, very, uh, very common number. Today we are going to be warming up, and I think we make it even a little bit warmer than this here in town. This model has us at 60. Then the front moves on through here, and we'll continue to drop down so drop through the 50s and this is by about mid to late afternoon by dinner time we'll already be down in the uh, low 50s and even mid 40s and even some 30s in portions of the hill country so once this front moves on through here cold air is going to settle in fairly quickly and it is going to be breezy in behind the front so wind chills will definitely be something to uh, take notice of later on this afternoon and then the wind subsides overnight we'll still have dry air and we'll that's going to set us up for a very cold morning. So we are going to be freezing tomorrow. The one problem with this front, nothing as far as any rain. It is going to be just basically sunny all day long. Now we will see the clouds return fairly quickly throughout the day tomorrow and maybe even a couple of sprinkly showers by later on tomorrow night and then on into Saturday. Rain chances are not that great, but they do exist and uh, that's the, the big problem with this is we just even though we hit a return of moisture coming in here over the weekend, uh, just rain chances are you know 20 percent at best one or two of these uh, sprinkly showers around here. That'll pretty much be the extent of it. So here's what the upper level winds look like. This is kind of the dividing line between the really, really, really cold air up there to the north and the milder air down here. We get this front moving on through with this northwesterly airflow and then all of that just kind of flip flops and we get into more of a kind of an overrunning situation and that's going to keep a lot of clouds around here over the weekend and even Sunday afternoon late Sunday Monday we get another front moving on through here but we get uh, another low trying to develop Remember a few weeks back when we had that low off to the uh, south and west of us and that would keep a lot of clouds around and maybe a couple of rain chances that looks like it's going to be the situation going into a good chunk of next week. So today, 65 at noon. That will pretty much be the high temperature today. And then temperatures will drop down in behind that front moving on through here. It is going to be windy, mid and even lower 50s by late afternoon. Tomorrow we start off freezing and then only make it up to 53 degrees. But temperatures are pretty much going to hold steady tomorrow night into Saturday with the return of the moisture around here, a lot more humidity, 70 on Saturday, a couple of showers are possible and look at that 60 Sunday morning. I mean, it's good, warm and humid, but then that'll all change first to next week with another front. Yeah, that's weird for a morning low 60 amongst all those other yeah. temperatures. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Right now we are at 524. We'll be right back. In the spotlight this morning, more big entertainment events are shifting gears as the Omicron variant continues to spread. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The Grammy Awards are on hold. A statement from CBS and the Recording Academy says, given the uncertainty surrounding the Omicron variant, holding the show on January 31st simply contains too many risks. They said a future date for the show would be announced soon. 
Meanwhile, the Sundance Film Festival, which begins January 20th, had been planned as a hybrid event, both in person and online. Now it's going fully virtual. Organizers cite the Omicron variant with its unexpectedly high transmissibility rates for the change. He has that it factor. He's a killer. The six-part docuseries Joe Montana, Cool Under Pressure, gives viewers an inside look at the legendary quarterback's life and career. I always wish that um, everyone could have a Sunday afternoon on the field, whether the win or lose, to be able to go down there and participate in a game and just see what the excitement does and see the adrenaline. Um, and then you would never, ever say, well, why is he still playing? Why doesn't he retire? Because you want to play as long as you can, because when you're done, you're done. Joe Montana, Cool Under Pressure, premieres Thursday on Peacock. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, about 42 degrees. And coming up, we'll have the murder trial involving two cousins. How police say they were able to find the suspect. Police say this car crash was no accident. A driver intentionally rammed into their patrol car. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about that coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting again in the 40s. We're going to warm up a little bit, but this time it's going to be temporary. It is Thursday, January 6th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. I hope you enjoy all the changes in the weather. It kind of keeps you on your toes. <laughs> um, Mike, I wore a flannel shirt yesterday uh, uh -huh. inside after I got home mm -hmm. from our early shift, went outside and was like, whoa, yeah. what was I thinking? Mm -hmm. It was literally, uh, you know, went to the gym yesterday and shorts and t-shirt was fine in the afternoon after coat in the morning. And then you need a coat again this morning. Maybe not by noon, but by later on this afternoon, yes, you will need it once again. 42 degrees, uh, fairly dry air around here, and that's really going to come into play then tomorrow morning. Wind is very light. We don't have, relatively speaking, a lot of humidity here in town, but further off to the east we do, and so that's why we're starting to see some of this thick fog. It is thickening up there around Victoria, Corpus Christi, dense fog advisory course along the uh, coastal plain up until uh, 8 o'clock this morning. So uh, just something to, to be on the lookout for, even though there's not a whole heck of a lot of it right now. Mountain cedar went up yesterday compared to the previous day on the high side. 2630 mold is low and throughout the rest of today that will be our high going for 65 today at noon. The front's going to move on through here. Wind's going to be shifting around uh, and picking up out of the north. 15 25 miles per hour. It is going to be very breezy and then 55. That'll be it if we're still that warm by late in the afternoon right around dinner time. Continue to drop off. Obviously much cooler in parts of the hill country and then the wind settles down overnight. We will have clear skies and that very dry air. So we're setting up for another cold one, another freeze tomorrow morning. Then that all shifts back around again for the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big on the road, sir? I'd say things are fair at this hour. We're not seeing many issues out there. US 90 at 36, 37 at Southeast Military. Let's take a closer look right now from these shots at Trans Guide. Very quiet start to this Thursday morning. There we have I-10 at Days of Vala. The morning is getting going, but just for a few folks out there that are getting their day started early with us. However, be on the lookout because stalls seem to be presenting themselves as the main issue at this hour. Still the same stalls to talk about there off I-10 eastbound at Ralph Fair Road. That's been there for a little while now, so watch out for that for our friends going up toward Bernie. Uh, taking a jump right over here far on the other side off Loop 64 eastbound at Pat Booker Road. We do have another stall to talk about. These stalls aren't presenting big issues, but as we take a look at the wider look at the map, looks like a green spider web, and that's the good news because you're not going to get entangled in any mess right now on the roadways, so things are pretty good. But as we take a look at these inbound times, we're seeing the same situation. Pretty green from Seguin on I-10. 10 westbound with 29 minutes to downtown San Antonio, 23 minutes coming in from 87 and Lavernia, and we are looking at 28 minutes from Floresville to the downtown San Antonio area. So one last look around town, Loop 410 at Ingram. The morning is getting going. We're going to have more construction to talk about in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. And right now we want to get to some late breaking news. San Antonio police are searching a west side neighborhood for a teen driver who they say rammed a patrol car. This happened as officers tried to stop that driver for a traffic violation. Katrina Weber is live on a street called Darby Boulevard, not far from Highway 90 and General Hudnell. Katrina, good morning. What has anyone heard out there? 
Well, good morning. Uh, no one hurt. The officer was not injured. Let me show you uh, exactly how his car was hit. You can see it was hit on the back of the passenger side. Uh, this is the truck that police say was involved, and there actually were five people in this truck two guys and three girls, all believed to be teenagers. This happened a little bit before four o'clock this morning. Police noticed this truck in this area running red lights and speeding. They say they tried to stop it. The car took off and came down the street, which turned out to be a dead end. Police say uh, that truck then backed up and hit this patrol car. Then everyone inside the truck got out and ran. Now, police had an extensive search on both sides of the railroad tracks right here. Uh, they were going behind homes with flags flashlights. They also had their helicopter up and dogs out. They did catch the three girls about a block away from here, but they are still searching for those two men, two teenage boys, rather, uh, the driver and a passenger. And police say that they did uh, search this truck and they found it was full of beer. This truck also was reported stolen on the northwest side of town. Reporting on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A local murder trial will continue today despite in-person trials being suspended this month. Edison Kataman is on trial for the March 2020 murder of his cousin Christopher. Yesterday's testimony was heard from a crime scene investigator and an SAPD investigator who said because there were witnesses to the shooting, police were able to find that suspect quickly. I was able to look up the name that was given on the radio uh, by the responding officers. Um, and the caller. And what name was it? Edison Karma. Despite the surge in cases right now, this trial is allowed to proceed because the jury was chosen before this latest round of COVID restrictions were put in place at the courthouse, but COVID is still having an impact. One juror has been replaced by an alternate due to exposure. Well, as of today, it has been one year since the deadly attacks on the U.S. Capitol and the committee formed to investigate that day and the days leading up to it is still working to determine what went wrong and who is responsible. However, as CNN's Brett Conway reports, we could have some answers in a matter of months. One year ago today. This is our Deadly violence in D.C. as thousands of people descended upon the U.S. Capitol trying to prevent the electoral vote certification for the 2020 election. Since then, more than 700 people have been charged in connection with the insurrection, and a House Select Committee has been entrenched in a sweeping investigation of the attack, working to establish the definitive narrative of what happened that day and what led up to it, offer a series of recommendations to prevent it from happening again, and if they discover criminal activity, send it to the Department of Justice. But finding hard evidence of wrongdoing hasn't been easy. The committee is fighting pushback from former President Donald Trump, including nearly a dozen challenges by his allies. Still, the investigation presses on. So far, the committee has conducted interviews with more than 300 people, collected around 35,000 documents, and issued more than 50 subpoenas. It's also been seeking phone records and bank records and digging into texts and other communications. In the coming months, there could be prime time public hearings. Then in the summer, we could see an interim report. And ahead of the 2022 midterm elections in November, it could all be wrapped up. But today on the anniversary, the focus is on safety, monitoring possible threats on the ground and online. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Partial human remains found in an area devastated by a wildfire last week in Colorado it comes after the Fire marshal searched through Boulder County. The fire leveled subdivisions and charred more than 6,000 acres. Authorities estimate that it destroyed nearly 1,000 homes. Earlier this week, the sheriff's officer reported two people were still missing. They are now working to identify those remains to determine a cause of death. Time now, 539 and about 43 degrees out there for now. And coming up. Did you want us to add about the Humane oh, Society right here? Okay, sorry, we, we, we thought we had video there. Yep. Uh, history on the high seas. We're going to tell you what the Navy is marking with its recent deployment. And outside with live cam, Mike's full forecast is coming up right here on GMSA. U.S. Navy made history this week with the first woman to lead a nuclear aircraft carrier on a deployment. 
Captain Amy Bowerinshift is the commanding officer of the USS Abraham Lincoln. Earlier this week, thousands of service members who will serve under Bowerinshift's command were deployed from San Diego at Naval Air Station North Island. They will be part of the Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group. The strike group is heading to the Indo-Pacific region with what the Navy calls its most advanced air wing. 542, about 43 degrees. And another animal is up for adoption. We're going to be speaking with the Humane Society coming up next. Well, Kim is here from the San Antonio Humane Society and a great dose of puppy breath. Oh, Just before we started recording here, best. it's like, oh, who's that little baby? This is sweet little Lily, and she has oh, just the best puppy breath and the best snuggles right now. Um, she's a uh, two-month-old uh, retriever mix, so she is definitely going to be outside playing and running around. So, and as small yeah. as she is, she's got decent size. I mean, it's not going to be yeah. a parking no. and dog, but, no. but big enough, and yeah. all that puppy get lots of things to chew on yes. because that's what really soothes them exactly. is to chew, and then, of course, you need all the other yes. goodies here, so you yes. brought lots of stuff here. We do, and so when you come by our location and you can adopt, obviously, you adopt a sweet little, little Lily and her friends, but you can get some leashes, you can get some harnesses, you can get some chew toys. So all this stuff is at our location um, and you can pop by anytime and purchase it. Okay, you don't have to adopt or anything no, like that. Even no. if you have a dog right now, just go yeah. there and, you know, why not pick this stuff up yes. at the uh, San Antonio Humane Society? Because yes. that yep. then helps support them and helps with the animals. Yes. And obviously, leashes for all different sizes. This one would not be good for <laughs> no. this No, that would not. <laughs> as of yet, but anything else. And like we were talking about too, with, with puppies, Chew toys, chew toys, and more chew toys. Exactly, and they're gonna wanna go on walks, so that's why this is perfect. Okay, and good exercise for you Yes. Well, so. <laughs> way well, to start if, the new year. <laughs> if you'd like more information about that little baby with the puppy breath, shop early so you can get the puppy breath. Uh, head on over to 11th uh, Round in Nacogdoches, or excuse me, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank yes. you, dear. Thank you. Oh, and we have some good news. Mike, I understand the kitten we featured with uh, ADL, Push Pop. Yep, yes, got, yes, Jake. Got adopted like that. <laughs> and I want to say both because we uh, recorded one for this week and next week uh -huh. with two little kittens, and I, I think uh, both of them oh. may have gotten adopted. Yeah, I wouldn't so. be surprised, but they said there's still plenty of yeah. kittens up for oh, adoption. Of course, yep. of course. Very cute. 547. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, looks pretty okay out there. I wouldn't say perfect morning, but I had to just say it. Just a pun intended there. <laughs> All right. Let's get a look at the roads. It's not necessarily perfect, but it's definitely quiet. 37 at Houston. A few folks out there again getting their morning, morning started early, hopefully uh, grabbing a cup of coffee as we get this new day going. Uh, but 16 to 4 at John Peace, you can see just uh, it's looking a little bit busier there. However, as I mentioned, it's not perfect. We do have some issues out there to talk about. Stalls seem to be the big problem right now. We Still have this off I-10 eastbound at Ralph Fair Road, taking a jump right over here. This one still presenting itself off Loop 1604 eastbound at Pat Booker Road. Not the only ones we've seen taking a jump down over here. New one spotted here off US 90 westbound at Frio City Road. So as you can see, it's not even 6 a.m., but we are starting to see a lot of things slowing down for some folks that are experiencing trouble out on the roadways. Just make sure your vehicles are working properly. Check those tire pressures as well, uh, and also watch out for this because we do have some construction that will be going on a little bit later today. Some concrete work out near 410. This is in the single southbound. It's led to a closure there uh, to Valley High Drive. Now this will be going on later in the afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. and that will be wrapping up until Friday, January 7th. That's already tomorrow. So some good news as we head out into the weekend. But overall, the morning is still off to a pretty green start. You're not going to find any troubles out on the roadway. Just make sure to keep your eyes on the road. Guys. Good idea. Thank you, Stephen. You know, add to what you were talking about. Yeah, just because the pets they feature, that's no guarantee they're going to be there. I mean, it's first come, first serve. Always. Uh, yeah, and they're just an example of, of what they have because some folks are like, wait a minute, you, you showed that and it's not there anyway. They had found a home, so. Right. What do what you Which have is good there? news. Oh, this. Sorry. Right. Hey, okay. <laughs> okay. This fellow was on my truck. Is that good luck? Yes. Yes? I say Steven yes. says yes. I say is yes. Is it good luck? Is it good luck? Okay, is sure. this a moth or a butterfly? I bet you it's a moth. I, Why? I'm with. Because of the color? Nope. And it, the, the, the antennas of the ear? Or are they the antennas? Ant yeah. Antenna. Yeah, okay. With butterflies don't have. And also, when a butterfly lights, its wings are up. Oh. And then when a moth lights, its wings are down. Ah. That's 
Science. There you go. Impress your friends with that little bit of uh, <laughs> I'm trivia. I'm going to share that knowledge later. <laughs> and as my wife always says, not how do you know that, but why? Anyway, so I can share it on the air. We have lots of clear skies <laughs> right now. And Mountain Cedar, of course, yesterday's count was 2630. And it did go up from the previous day's reading. And we're not even into the peak of the season as of yet. We've had a couple of peaks, obviously, with some five-digit uh, numbers. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the front that moves through later on today because it is going to be windy later on this afternoon and then uh, obviously that's going to be showing up in tomorrow's count but yeah mountain cedar goes through pretty much the month of january and then finally begins to uh, taper off once we get on into february all right visibility is pretty good out there gonzalez is now showing a hint of some fog victoria corpus christi of course in that dense fog advisory in our southeastern counties through eight o'clock this morning so it doesn't look like it's going to be real stubborn fog unlike Last time we had some around here and it lasted up and through about mid morning or so. Nothing really showing up on the uh, satellite picture right now, but you go elsewhere in the country and uh, there's a lot up there. A lot of snow in the uh, mid south all the way through the central plain states and then it's getting kind of messy here in and around parts of Tennessee where it's changing over into a little bit of uh, freezing rain mixed in with some of that snow. And all that's going to be working its way up the eastern seaboard. So any travel plans off to the east, not only today, but then the next couple of days, you may want to uh, definitely check ahead. As far as uh, anything, as far as rain around here, unfortunately, nothing. This front's going to be coming through dry. We start off with clear skies tomorrow, uh, but then the cloud's going to move in quickly. So with the clear skies starting off tomorrow, that's going to allow temperatures to really drop down. So we are going to be not only seeing temperatures drop throughout the afternoon today, but then bottoming out right around freezing here in town tomorrow. Definitely 20s in the hill country. Clouds are going to move in fairly quickly tomorrow, and maybe tomorrow night we see a couple of stray showers. Now again, this is one of those long range models, kind of paints it with a broad brush, so it's not like there's going to be rain every Everywhere. As a matter of fact, I think rain chances are 20% at best. Uh, a couple leftover showers throughout the day on Saturday. And then going into next week, uh, we will start off, I think, with a little bit of sunshine first part of the day on Monday. Then we do keep a lot of clouds around here, perhaps another shot at some rain by later on in the week. So we're going to be kind of getting into a pattern that we had a few weeks ago with a lot of kind of clouds around here. So we'll talk about that in a second. 65 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies, that's the high today. Then we drop down throughout the afternoon, dropping through the 50s and even down in the 40s in the hill country by late in the afternoon and going into dinner time. Tomorrow we start off at freezing and then only get up to 53. What's interesting is though, then the high tomorrow, low Saturday, temperatures stay fairly steady. Warm air, humid air comes back in here fairly quickly. So it will be uh, kind of a spring like weekend. Chance of rain late tomorrow night, Saturday, and then we clear out by Monday with another front. All right. Thank you, Mike. 552, okay. about 42 degrees. And coming up, what police thought was a lost dog ended up being a hero dog. We're going to tell you how this canine led police to the scene of an accident. And here are your lottery numbers. And by the way, somebody won the big Powerball jackpot last night in two states. But we'll get to that coming up. Pick three numbers, 721 Fireball 1, Daily 4, 1318 Fireball 8. Cash 5, 2, 10, 13, 14, 18. And Lotto, Texas, 18, 22, 25, 29, 50, 51. And those Powerball numbers, 6, 14, 25, 33, 46, Powerball 17, Power Play 2. Jackpot was $630 million, and it will be split by two winning tickets, one sold in California, the other in Wisconsin. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA on a Thursday morning, we are live in Washington one year after the January 6th insurrection and President Biden is set to address the nation this morning and the investigation still ramping up. We're looking back on the day our democracy was rocked and just how close former President Trump came to overturning the election. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. What started seemingly as a lost dog on a bridge ended as a heroic rescue thanks to the clever canine. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Police officers' discovery of a dog wandering on a New Hampshire bridge was just the beginning of an amazing and heroic rescue. Responding officers tried to corral the Shiloh Shepherd, but says she kept running away toward these damaged guardrails. It turns out, they say, she was leading them to the scene of an accident. They discovered a, a truck which had been overturned with uh, two gentlemen 
that were ejected from the vehicle. One of the injured was the dog's owner, Cam Laundry. We shook him up, didn't know what was happening, and next thing you know, the cops were there, and it was all because of her. Both men were treated for injuries and hypothermia, and authorities say throughout the ordeal, the dog, named Tinsley, never left her owner's side. She's my little guardian angel. It's a miracle. A do-gooder's good deeds gone viral led a community in Tennessee to save the day for their very own friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It started with Steven Strickerhausen seeing pictures of the costumed superhero, played by 18-year-old resident Isaiah Brooks, surprising kids, visiting hospitals, and spreading smiles on street corners. It's like, man, this kid's pretty cool. He's doing a lot of cool stuff. I reached out to his mom, asked if there was anything that he needed, and she said, you know, he could use a a tune-up on his car. County residents started collecting donations and within two weeks raised $20,000, enough to buy a new car for their very own hometown hero. I think it's awesome. Uh, I don't know how to thank the community enough. Or take a look at this. I'm Jeremy Roth. Well, still ahead on GMSA win last night, a very special milestone for Spurs head coach Greg Popovich. We'll tell you all about that. And we're in the middle of cold and flu season. We'll tell you which home remedies work and which ones do not work. You're watching GMSA. This is the end of what police say was a joyride, but it's resulting in trouble for the people who were inside that truck. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it coming up. It's been one year since the deadly attacks on our nation's capital. We'll give you a look at what's happening today and what's to come in the future. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 42 degrees. Uh, we've had quite, quite the range of temperatures this week. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. We hope you slept well last night. It is Thursday, January 6th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I know my husband yesterday was trying to rearrange my daughter's closet. He was like, oh, here, we can have this winter section back here. I was like, no, 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 no. This is South Texas, and we need all the clothing out all the time. <laughs> Steph's like, I got this, honey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike joins us now with more on our ever-changing forecast, and that trend does continues for days to come. Yep, went from heavy coats to uh, t-shirts yesterday, and today it's starting off with coats. Probably go without it by noon, but keep it handy. So don't rearrange the closet, no. Louise. Anyway, uh, we've got clear skies as of right now, and temperatures, yeah, are pretty chilly out there. Plus, we've got some fog to deal with down here along the coastal plain. A little bit showing up around Gonzales, a hint around Seguin and Corpus Christi, just a quarter mile of visibility in that dense fog advisory. Of course, down to the uh, southeast till 8 o'clock. So 41 here in town. It has now dropped the freezing and burning stage. Ball Verde in your backyard, you may may well be at freezing and then some uh, freezing temperatures out in portions of the hill country. I think we drop down another couple of notches here and there in the next uh, hour or so. Mountain cedars on the high side. It go, did go up from the previous day's reading. Of course, the updated count is going to come out about uh, 7, 730 this morning. That won't really obviously take into effect then the front that's going to move through by about noon. So tomorrow's mountain cedar count is going to be interesting after the uh, breezy conditions later on today. We'll drop down to the upper 30s here in town and we'll warm up nicely. We make it all the way up into the uh, mid 60s by noon, but that's going to be the high temperature today. Then the front's going to move on through here and temperatures will continue a slow, steady decline. Mid 50s by late in the afternoon and obviously even colder than that, probably even upper 40s parts of the hill country and then it will continue to drop off fairly quickly from that point in the overnight hours. The wind is going to be subsiding and then we're going to drop down to freezing tomorrow morning and then do a complete 180 as we go on into the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. It's been pretty quiet thus far. What's going quiet on? Quiet and steady, Mike. Uh, let's take a look right now. I-10 at Frio, I-10 at Presa. The morning's getting moving. We have a lot more folks getting their day started early with us, hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee as we're starting Thursday. But right, 35, I-35, that is at 410, 35 at Alamo. Yeah, you can see a few more folks out there this morning. But uh, if you are going to be traveling, let's take a look to see what could be, you could possibly encounter, especially if you're driving up to Bernie. Uh, we do have a stall here off I-10 eastbound at Ralph Fair Road that's been there for quite a while now. It's not cleared out from the TxDOT website, so you got to watch out for that. We're still seeing the same issue over here as well off Loop 1604 eastbound at Pat Booker Road, and that third stall we told you about right over here off of US 90 westbound at Frio City Road. So at the 6 a.m. hour, this seems to be the problem that we've been spotting, these stalled vehicles. However, a wider look at the map does show that we still, thankfully, are off to a green start. You're not going to find any delay 
overlays right now. And if you plan on making a trip to San Antonio, maybe in the next few minutes, let's take out those inbound times right now because you're still have pretty much uh, green times across the board here. You can see 37 from Pleasanton, Pleasant driving those northbound lanes with 28 minutes, 18 minutes from Castroville on Highway 90 eastbound and little time from Lytle on 35 northbound with 16 minutes. Uh, one last look around town, a very quiet start. However, it does look like it's picking up in some of these other shots. We'll continue to keep a close eye on the roadways and have more construction in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. Some teens who may have been out for a good time now have some bad days ahead. They're facing criminal charges. San Antonio police say they were passengers in a stolen pickup that rammed a patrol car. Katrina Weber is live in a west side neighborhood where police are still searching for the driver. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that this started with a traffic stop. Well, that's right. Police told me that they saw the driver uh, running red lights and speeding through this area. They tried to pull that driver over, but he continued on coming down the street. This is Darby Boulevard here near Highway 90 and General Hudnell. Anyway, they pulled down this dead end street and didn't realize it. And then that's where everyone bailed out of the truck. But that was only after they hit this patrol car that you see there. They ran the back of it. A police say that they ran into this dead end and then backed up into the police car. Everyone inside got out. They say there were two guys and three girls, all teenagers, inside that pickup. They took out and spread out throughout this neighborhood. The police had a pretty wide-ranging search uh, going on. And in fact, uh, we have some video to show you about this whole thing. Uh, they had a wide-ranging search going on. They did go on the other side of the railroad tracks. They were going in the backyards of homes. But they ended up finding three teenage girls in a home or underneath a home, hiding under a home, uh, about a block away from where this crash happened. They took those girls into custody. They're still looking for the driver and another male passenger who they say did get away. But police had a very extensive search going on with a helicopter and dogs. They came up empty handed when it comes to those guys, but three teenage girls in custody looking at charges. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, three new COVID-19 testing sites will soon be available as the demand for testing increases. Health officials say this comes as the city is currently in another surge of COVID-19 cases. Jonathan Cotto joins us live this morning. Good morning, Jonathan. We understand that one of the three new locations could be open as early as today. Good morning, Mark. That's right. That location right here at the Alamo College's district building. Now, again, this is all in an effort to test more people at a larger capacity, reduce those wait times, and more importantly, address the increase in COVID-19 cases caused by the Omicron variant that health officials say is already putting a strain in hospitals. Now, Mayor Ron Ehrenberg says that all three sites will be open as soon as possible, with the first location opening today here at the Alamo College's district support operations building, located just north of downtown, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, this is all being made possible by a partnership with the City of San Antonio and Community Labs, a nonprofit organization. Now, the other two locations don't open until tomorrow and Monday. Those will be at Palo Alto College and St. Phillips College. No appointments will be necessary at any of these sites, and testings will be done on a walk-up basis only. Now, Metro Health says test results will be available within 24 hours. Now, in just a couple of hours, we'll be seeing just a uh, folks trickling into this site to Metro Health along with city officials are scheduled to meet later this morning around nine o'clock. We'll be covering that meeting uh, at GMSA at nine and of course live streaming it on KSAT.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Staying with the pandemic, a major decision overnight to green light more vaccine booster shots. It comes as more schools cancel in-person classes due to safety concerns. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, more children are now eligible for COVID vaccine booster shots. The CDC giving the final go ahead last night for kids as young as 12 to get another shot, just as a surge of infections disrupts schools nationwide. We are going to fight to get our kids back in in-person learning. Chicago schools canceling classes again today after the teachers union refused to return to the classroom, citing a lack of testing and accusing the city of having no safety plan. If you want to get us back into the schools quicker, um, provide testing. We're trying to be practical for what makes the most sense for our district. COVID causing school staffing shortages everywhere. In Boston, the superintendent stepped in to teach fourth grade. I jumped into gear and said, I'll clear my calendar and I'll go over and teach a fourth grade class. The U.S. Education Secretary last night insisting that in-person learning is safe. 
we have better tools now to keep our schools safe, including mitigation strategies that we know work. Uh, they worked before we had vaccines. In the meantime, stricter safety measures are coming to Southern California. Employers in Los Angeles County will soon be required to provide medical grade masks like the N95 to anyone working indoors. It comes as a testing site in Los Angeles confirms a case of so-called flu Rona, someone infected with both the flu and COVID. You know, it's not new that two viruses can infect someone at the same time, although it's not common. If you do get two viruses in one, which again is rare, you will be protected if you're vaccinated. Meanwhile, COVID continues to take a toll on the entertainment industry. The Grammy Awards have now been postponed indefinitely. Monaco Saramdi, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, San Antonio Police Crime Stoppers asking for help finding a person suspected of assaulting a woman happened December 11th on the far northwest side. Investigators say a 27-year-old woman ran out of gas on the access road between the Dominion Camp Bullis access road of I-10. The unknown suspect pictured on your screen pulled over in his vehicle and offered to get her gas. The victim went with the suspect to an Exxon station. After getting gas, returning to vehicle, the suspect is accused of sexually assaulting the victim. If you know anything about this incident, take a look at these images and call the number on your screen in that yellow banner, 210-224-STOP. Three-year Lena Kill has now been missing for 18 days and there are still no answers. And in just a few hours, search crews will resume efforts to find her. So yesterday, an FBI dive team searched an area about two miles from where she was last seen on December 20th. The lead they followed came up empty. Lena's father is sharing his thoughts on the investigation through Pamela Allen. She's the leader of Eagles Flight San Antonio, a local advocacy group. He was being briefed by the FBI and he went to his knees and just started praying. He wants his daughter home. He misses his daughter. He loves his daughter. What he's praying is that someone has her, keeping her alive, and that they'll release her. And, and he wants his baby home. Since Lena's disappearance, her father has quit his job to focus on his family's well-being. The Afghan community is stepping up to help that family. If you have any information that can help, you are asked to call 210-207-7660. There is a $150,000 reward for any information leading to Lena. President Biden and members of Congress solemnly marking the first anniversary of the U.S. Capitol insurrection. Lawmakers are holding a series of events today to reflect on the violent attack by supporters of President Donald Trump one year ago. Now, hundreds of Trump supporters used force to push past police and use their fists and flags to break through the windows of the Capitol to interrupt the certification of President Joe Biden's victory. And that's actually video of one of our correspondents, Ike Ajachi. There's video. We're going to have more on the one year anniversary of the Capitol insurrection coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. The world's top tennis player might have lost his chance to play in the Australia Open next week. Novak Djokovic was denied entry into Australia over his failure to provide documentation showing his exemption from the country's COVID-19 vaccination requirements. Now, Djokovic spent all day yesterday confined to a quarantine hotel waiting for a court's decision to allow him into the country or not and likely spent another night there in the so-called immigration detention. The tennis star says tournament officials gave him the exemption, but Australia's prime minister says rules are rules. Djokovic has won the Australia Open over the last three years and nine times overall among his record-tying 20 Grand Slam titles. A decision on whether or not he will get to make his 21st Grand Slam is still unknown. It was a special night for our San Antonio Spurs and Greg Popovich. Not only do the silver and black snap a four game losing streak, they do it on the same night. Pop becomes the first coach, first to coach 2000 NBA games with the same team. This is DeJounte Murray led the Spurs last night with two, 22 points. Devin Vassell and Derek White each added 17 points in San Antonio's first win in five games. But it was a close one. Spurs hang on to win it. 99 to 97. The road trip continues for the Silver and Black. Spurs have tonight off Friday. They'll take on the 76ers in Philadelphia. Tip off for that one is at 6 p.m. Congrats, Coach Pop. Time now, 613 and 42 degrees for right now. And imagine a car that changes colors on command. That's ahead in your morning tech bites. And just ahead, we'll take a look at some new features in development over at Insta Instagram. We'll tell you when you will see them in your feed. And another quick look out there with live cam. Again, we are starting your day in the 40s, but don't be fooled. We're not going to warm up as much as we did yesterday. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back. Just about 617 out of Consumer News. Instagram coming out with some choices. Right now, three different feeds are being tested. Home ranks posts on what you're likely to be interested in. Favorites is for people you care about most. And following is just for the accounts you follow. They're expected to roll out on the gram by July. TikTok is testing a new feature similar to Twitter's retweet. The repost button is available to a number of users. It allows you to share videos with your friends. BMW is out with new technology aimed at the indecisive among us. Now on display at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, a car that changes colors from white to gray to black at the push of a button. The paint is an actually an electronic ink similar to what is used in e-reader tablets. Now I'm worried about go. problems though. You know how like we have new technology and then later problems arise. We're going to have like a camouflage car, like half black, half white, half gray. Uh, yeah, it's, later it's on. It's all coming. Down the Mike, line. you seem perplexed. What if you bump it? I mean, if it gets dinged right, or something. Right, exactly. That, yeah. we are, we're always thinking about the problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, my I thing, because we, we've seen it, both. Will it be stuck in the middle? <laughs> there will be a lot of challenges there, for sure. But it's, it's, we'll certainly I have some that. buyers. Yeah. Uh, let's it's check out cool. traffic right now. Stephen, where are you at on this? Well, it would be cool if you could make it invisible. Then it'd be like the Wonder Woman <laughs> bar right over there. Now that I would buy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool, right? Uh, but yeah, Mike was saying, you know, what happens if you bump it? Well, thankfully, we're not seeing any bumps in the road just yet from these trans guide shots. But that doesn't mean that there are not situations that are out there. Uh, let's take a quick look around town 281. Then we have 1604 at Hosman. You can see that very light traffic, but picking up there off US 90 at 36. I 10 at Days of Allah. Still pretty, pretty quiet through that area. But as I mentioned, although we're not seeing any issues that are visible to us from Trans Guy, that doesn't mean that they're not there. We got to take our uh, eyes and attention here to a crash here off I 10 westbound at Houston Street. Uh, we're not seeing this uh, from Trans Guy because they're not picking up any flashing lights out there, but we're going to watch that closely and see how that does impact that morning drive and something to be on the look out for, especially if you're an early morning commuter through 281 or 1604. Tomorrow morning, this will be wrapping up the sign installations we've talked about. It's such a the full closure of the eastbound loop 1604 flyover ramp from the northbound to, to, to pardon me to the northbound and southbound US 281 area and the traffic in the meantime is being taken off and detoured to the frontage roads from nine in the evening to five in the morning. So that will be wrapping up tomorrow. So that's some good news. And one last thing, we still have this pesky stall that's been out there from I 10 eastbound at Ralph Fair Road. So watch out for that especially if you are traveling through that area a little bit later this morning. But overall, the morning has been off to a pretty decent start. We're going to continue to keep our eyes on the roads. Guys? And Mike has a bus stop forecast for us. Yes, indeed. And uh, I probably want to warm up the car and the bus a little bit before you head out this morning. It is on the chilly side, especially in parts of the hill country where we do have freezing temperatures. We are going to be um, finishing off about uh, 39 degrees here in town. Subtract about 10 from that, kind of jumping ahead for tomorrow. More on that coming up. Now, after school, only 55 degrees. We are going to be hitting a high today. We'll peak right around noon, and then that front comes on through here. It is going to be breezy wind out of the north at about 15, 25 miles per hour. Now, beautiful yesterday. We had those gorgeous blue skies. Great for a drive out toward the hill country. And, yeah, it's a beautiful picture there. I love the intensity of those blue skies. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we're not really seeing the, any glow of the uh, morning sunrise yet. Should be another beautiful one because we do have a lot of clear skies out there. However, it's the clear skies and relatively high humidity down along the coastal plain, which is causing some of that fog. So we've got visibility down to three quarters of a mile Victoria, quarter mile Corpus Christi, a little bit around Gonzales. Hint of it being reported around Seguin. Dense fog advisory down to the southeast just for the next uh, roughly hour and a half up until 8 o'clock. Here's water vapor imagery, and this is why we had in that KSAC Connect picture that just intense, beautiful blue sky out there with the very dry air, this darker shade, very dry air aloft in the atmosphere. Notice how it is coming in here out of the north to northwest. And that beautiful blue skies today, unfortunately, nothing, not enough moisture with this front moving on through here. But up to the north, this flow is going to be pulling that front on through, like I said, about noon. We don't get anything from this. No rain at all. Maybe a couple of showers by, oh, later on tomorrow night and then into Saturday. Very few and far between at best. So this front comes through fairly dry. We start off with clear skies tomorrow, and so that's what's going to allow temperatures to drop down right around freezing or obviously 20s in the hill country. And then the clouds come in here fairly quickly. We'll have a couple of showers. Now, again, this is one of those long-range models. 
paints things in with a broad brush, but it's just the uh, the chance for a couple of showers around here, and that's going to be throughout the day on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, we'll see a bit more sunshine in the afternoon, and then going into next week, after starting off with a little bit of sunshine on Monday, we're going to see a lot more in the way of clouds around here, and hopefully chance for some rain maybe by the mid to latter portion of next week. So forecast today, 65 degrees at noon. That's going to be the high for the day. And then we drop down into the mid and even lower 50s by later on in the day. It is going to be windy wind out of the north 15 25 miles per hour starting off at freezing tomorrow and we will only make it up to about the low 50s. Temperature is pretty much don't move overnight then into Saturday. We stay at 50, get up to 70. Very warm, very humid over the weekend. A couple of showers around here late tomorrow night, Saturday. And then we clear out with another front. And by the way, happy 12th day of Christmas today. Epiphany. That is Three right. Three Kings Day. Yes, it is. That's right. It's not that graphic to tell you about tree collection. No. No. <laughs> Just, Just a reminder. 12th, 12th day of Christmas. So. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people will take out decorations by today. Some, and then some will wait for the weekend. Right, and we've got an interesting story about uh, taking down Christmas ah. light coming up on GMSA at yes. 9. Right now, 623, 42 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the winning Powerball ticket goes to two lucky people in two different states. We're going to have that story just ahead. With thyroid eye disease, I was always wearing sunglasses to hide my bulging eyes. I wore them just about everywhere. But then my doctor recommended Tepeza, a prescription medicine for thyroid eye disease, and I didn't have to hide so much. In a clinical study, more than 8 out of 10 patients taking Tepeza had less eye bulging, and nearly 7 out of 10 saw improvements in double vision. Tepeza is an infused medicine. Patients taking Tepeza may experience infusion reactions. Tell your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as high blood pressure, fast heartbeat, shortness of breath, or muscle pain. Before receiving Tepeza, tell your doctor if you have diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, or are pregnant or planning to become pregnant. Tepeza may raise your blood sugar even if you do not have diabetes and may worsen IBD such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. I look more like my old self again. Now I wear sunglasses because I want to. Ask your doctor if Tepeza is right for you and visit mytepeza.com to see Genie's before and after photos. Welcome back, folks. Well, there were two winning tickets for Wednesday night's massive Powerball jackpot. One ticket was sold in California, the other in Wisconsin. The winners will split either the $632.6 million jackpot or the $450.2 million cash value option. This was the seventh largest jackpot in Powerball history. It is now back down to $20 million. Congrats to the winners. Time now, 626 and about 42 degrees out there. Are you trying to treat a cold? Many of you watching or listening right now are ahead on GMSA. We'll hear from experts about which of those home remedies that we uh, dealt with as kids maybe work and which ones don't. San Antonio police say they're still searching for the ones who got away. Two teens who were inside this pickup that hit one of their patrol cars. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Three new COVID-19 testing sites are opening to address the high demand. We'll tell you where they're at and when they're opening coming up next. Today is the anniversary of the deadly January 6th attack on our nation's capital. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting from Capitol Hill. Coming up, a look at the events today and what's being done about justice moving forward. And outside with live camp, chilly again this morning. The sun just now beginning to come up, but this time tomorrow morning, it sounds like we're going to be much colder yet again. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, 6th of January. Good morning. Hope you're having a great week so far and hope you're enjoying the change in temperature. Very warm yesterday afternoon. How do we dress today, Mike, or is it still kind of up in the air? A little everything. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, coat this morning. Um, won't need it by noontime. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go outside for lunch, then you'll need it by later on this afternoon. All right. So Got kind it. of an up and down day again. Yep. Big heavy coat tomorrow and then um, flip flops and shorts by the weekend. So nice. Yeah. Again, all over the place. If you are new to town, welcome to uh, South Texas. This is kind of typical. Yeah, nice little orange glow of the uh, sunrise this morning. A lot of clear skies out there. Temperature is at 41 degrees. That's the normal low, the average low temperature, two points at 31, which means we've got still fairly dry air here in town. A little bit of a breeze out of the northwest. A lot more humidity off to these. Notice how visibility has been dropping down in Gonzales. Victoria, mile and a half, quarter mile at uh, Corpus Christi in the dense fog advisory. 
or southeastern counties for the next uh, hour and a half up until eight o'clock. Mountain Cedar did go up yesterday from the previous day's reading 2630. And of course, the updated count is going to come out in about um, half an hour. 45 minutes an hour. It's not going to obviously take into account the front moves through after this morning's updated count. So it's going to be interesting to see what that number is by Saturday morning with the windy conditions that we're going to be seeing later on today. Mold is on the low side and uh, mid 60s later on about noon. Then the front it's going to be windy mid 50s and even lower than that by late in the afternoon. We start off freezing tomorrow only make it into the low 50s maybe a couple of showers late and what's going to be interesting is temperatures will stay fairly steady tomorrow afternoon overnight into early Saturday. A couple of scattered showers around here on Saturday. And like I said, it is going to be warm and humid over the weekend and then to start off next week, yet another front. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. You haven't had much to talk about this morning. Yeah, I would say that we do have some issues out there, though, Mike. As we've been talking about, the morning has been getting going, and there have been issues that have been present out on the roadways, actually. So as we take a look right now, although we're not seeing a lot of activity from these shots at Transguide, we do have some crashes to talk about. Let's take your attention right over here, Loop 410 northbound at Rigsby Avenue. This crash popping up, and just a few moments ago, uh, here off US 87 or Rigsby Avenue, we saw a buildup in those northbound lane. So you got to watch out for that because now that morning rush is here. This could present a problem a little bit later on or for our drivers taking a jump not too far from here. I 10 westbound at Houston Street. Another crash detected right over here. So you can see that the morning is getting going and although that we've not spotted a whole lot of issues, they're still out there. So you got to drive carefully and if your travels take you through San Antonio from these neighboring communities, the good news is it's still green across the board. We're not spotting any delays uh, for any drivers that plan on making that trip maybe in the next few minutes or so. So that's some good news, but again, we're going to continue to keep a close eye on the roadways and we'll see how those crashes impact your morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. San Antonio police say some teens who are out for a joyride are getting used to the inside of a jail cell right now. Officers tracked down those three suspects in a west side neighborhood after the teens ran from them. But police are still looking for two others. Katrina Weber is live on Darby Boulevard, not far from Highway 90 and General Hudnall. Now, Katrina, we understand one of the people they're looking for is the driver of the truck who also rammed a patrol car. That's right, and that's where this part of the incident happened, right here on this dead end street. The police say that that driver was trying to get away from officers, turned down this dead end street, and when he realized he was trapped, he backed into the patrol car in an effort to get away. Now, the owner of that truck just picked up his vehicle just a few seconds ago. I had a chance to chat with him, but let me give you a look at the video so you can see exactly what happened, how that truck ended up. Now, the owner told me he was glad to hear that that officer was not hurt. The truck hit the rear pass passenger side of that officer's patrol car. Police say the officer originally was trying to stop the pickup, which was stolen, for speeding. But the driver took off immediately, ultimately heading down this dead end street. After the crash, all five people who were inside the stolen truck scattered. Police found three teenage girls hiding under a house about a block away from here. They launched a widespread search in this neighborhood for the two teen boys, the driver and another passenger in the truck, but they came up empty handed. Now, at one point, police had their helicopter up and dogs out, but again, no sign of those teenage boys who were inside the pickup. And again, I should just point out that the person who took the truck away is the actual rightful owner of the truck who was not involved in any of this. The people who police are looking for were in that truck, which was stolen this morning. Reporting live from the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Turning to the coronavirus, our local hospitals continue to see a rise in COVID-19 patients. We started out with 506 people hospitalized on Monday. That number now stands at 569. 134 people are in the intensive care unit. 48 are on ventilators, helping them breathe. When it comes to new cases, our community Metro Health confirming more than 2,700 new cases. There are also seven deaths confirmed. Our risk level remains at severe. A new COVID-19 testing site opening today as part of an effort to address the demand for testing and the increase in new COVID-19 cases caused by the new Omicron variant. Well, just in time, Jonathan Kocha joins us now with more on this live. Jonathan, will there be more big testing sites opening up here in the Alamo City area? Good morning, Mark, and excellent question. In fact, there will be three sites opening throughout the city. Now, 
Ron Mayor, uh, Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the other two will be opening as soon as possible. And again, this is all in an effort to get as many people tested at a larger capacity and, of course, reduce the wait times. Now, the first location in opening up right here at the Alamo District's Operation Support Building located just north of downtown. It'll start at 8 a.m. through 6 p.m. and will be available Monday through Friday. Now, this is all being made possible by a partnership with the city of San Antonio and Community Labs. The other two locations don't open until tomorrow and Monday. Those will be at Palo Alto College and St. Philip's College. No appointment will be necessary at any of these sites and testings will be done on a walk-up basis only. Metro Health says the test results will be available within 24 hours. Now, Metro Health and city officials will be meeting here later this morning around 9 o'clock. We'll be broadcasting that meeting live at GMSA on 9, so be sure to follow our later newscast. And, of course, we'll be live streaming that meeting on KSAT. Dot com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Three-year-old Lena Kill has now been missing for 18 days here in San Antonio. There's still no answers. And in just a few hours, search crews will resume efforts to find her. Yesterday, an FBI dive team searched an area about two miles from where she was last seen on December 20th. The lead they followed came up empty. If you have any information that can help, you're urged to call 207-7660. There is a $150,000 reward for information leading to Lena. Bear County is seeing a rising trend in child deaths, including homicides, suicides, and accidental deaths. And tonight, a group of community child advocates will provide data released by the Bear County Medical Examiner. The Child Fatality Review Team is made up for of more than 30 organizations of doctors, first responders, and child protection advocates. They will review the information to see how to best intervene or prevent future child deaths and any trends they see. Members say there's no way to totally prevent child deaths, but they work to raise awareness and remind parents to stay connected to what their children are doing. Sometimes it's something as simple as a seatbelt would have made a difference. Getting a car seat checked or storing a firearm properly, looking both ways before crossing the street. Once the review is complete, the committee will develop a plan and appoint agencies to spearhead the plan. The local agency will also report the findings to a state review committee, which will see if any laws or policies need to be changed at the state level. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are hoping you can help them track down the suspects in two separate robbery cases. First up, an aggravated robbery at a Best Buy store. Here's the suspect. Police last Wednesday, this man went into the store off 410 and tried to get away with several items. When someone tried to stop him, he pulled out a weapon, threatened to harm the victim. Then the suspect ran out of the store. And the search is also on for this robbery suspect. Police say last month he went into the Dollar General on Old Pearsall Road and took off with several items. So you are asked to call Crime Stoppers if you have any information about either case. Again, that number is on your screen, 210-224-STOP. A scary scene at a North Texas Walmart after a two-year-old grabbed a handgun and accidentally shot their mother and one-year-old sibling. It happened in Granbury, just southwest of Fort Worth. Investigators say the two-year-old grabbed the gun from the center console in the vehicle before it went off. The mother was hit in the arm, the one-year-old in the leg. Both were taken to a Metroplex hospital and are expected to be okay. The country is marking one year since the deadly attack on our nation's capital, a day when a violent mob of pro-Trump protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol in what's being described as the worst attack on American democracy since the Civil War. U.S. Attorney General vowing justice will be served to any and all involved in the attack. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with a look at the events. Good morning. It was a rare speech from the attorney general making a point to say that the probe into the attack is far from over and that they'll follow the facts to wherever they lead. This morning, a tale of two days. In the weeks after the attack, the Capitol complex was outfitted with armored military vehicles, tall fences and barbed wire. This time, a more ordinary approach. The FBI currently does not have any information about a credible threat. Still, Capitol Police says they'll be ready this time Thank if anything does happen, claiming the department has improved. Minutes. The events of January 6th did expose critical departmental failures and deficiencies with operational planning, intelligence, staffing, training, and equipment. Today, Democratic lawmakers will host several events commemorating that deadly day. Most Republicans expected to be absent. 
A new ABC News Ipsos poll says 72% of Americans believe those involved were threatening democracy. Make no mistake, our democracy was on the brink of catastrophe that day. As for justice, it continues. In a rare speech, Attorney General Merrick Garland said the Justice Department will continue to prosecute any and all cases related to the attack. Whether they were present that day or were otherwise criminally responsible for the assault on our democracy, we will follow the facts wherever they lead. Now, back to the ABC News Ipsos poll, 58% of Americans feel former President Donald Trump bears a great deal or a good amount of responsibility. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And coming up later this morning, we're going to have a special report on the one-year anniversary of the deadly attack on the uh, nation's capital. So look for that coverage at 8 again this morning right here on KSA 12. Okay, time check right now, just about 643, 42 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, home remedies for the common cold. We're going to tell you which ones work and which ones don't. 46, we're smack dab in the middle of cold and flu season. And if you come down with something, you've probably heard about all kinds of those at-home remedies from people around you. That's right, but which home remedies actually work? So researchers reviewed dozens of studies and found that zinc supplements may prevent a runny nose, high temperature, and headaches. It also may prevent clear up colds up to two days earlier. So most experts will also tell you that water, juice, clear broth, or warm lemon water with honey can loosen congestion and prevent dehydration. Gargling salt water will also help to soothe a sore throat. As for what doesn't work, Mayo Clinic says forget about antibiotics. Those attack bacteria, but they're no help against cold viruses. And vitamin C won't help once cold symptoms appear. However, if you take it regularly, it may work as a preventative as well as shorten the length of time that you have cold symptoms. So perhaps the best thing you can do for yourself when you're ill, get some sleep. Ah. Most health professionals will agree that getting your body enough rest will help it fight off ailments. Oh, I agree, definitely. 647, here's Steven. Well, traffic troubles are already plaguing the morning rush hour. You can take a look. We have flashing lights and first responders out here at I-10 at Proban taking a closer look. Uh, this looks like quite the scene there. We do have uh, pretty much looking like a river of traffic through the I-10 corridor. Taking you right to the map. That's in the westbound lanes. According to Texas, you can see that buildup already starting to happen. Not looking good there. Taking a jump up over here. A second crash off I-10 westbound at uh, East Houston Street has been there for quite a while. And a third crash right over here off Loop 410 northbound at Rigsby Avenue. Thursday morning off just a trouble start, but let's check in with Mike for the forecast. All right, it is going to be a gorgeous day today, but it's going to be changing throughout the course of the day. First of all, beautiful picture. Look at the blue skies out there. I mean, it was gorgeous yesterday, and that's the way it's going to be again today. I did not know there was a replica of Stonehenge in Ingram. Did y'all? No. No idea beautiful. about that. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, gorgeous start this morning. Nice orange glow there along the horizon. Gonzalez has dropped down to two miles visibility. We do have the dense fog advisory up until 8 o'clock for our southeastern counties. Freezing parts of the hill country, 34 ball Verde, so close to it there. Now down to 33, 41 out there at the airport. It's all said and done, may drop down a couple of more notches. Humidity dew points remain very low, and that's really going to come into play then, especially tomorrow. So as far as what's going to be going on today, we have temperatures that are going to be up to, I think will actually be higher. This computer model has us at 60. I'm going for 65 before the front moves on through here. And as it does, we are going to be dropping down good 10, 15 degrees, mid 50s by late in the afternoon, obviously 40s in the hill country, and then even by dinner time. And just after that, we're going to be in the uh, 40s and 50s, even some 30s in parts of the hill country. Wind is going to subside because it's going to be very windy in behind that front. And with the clear skies, dry air, light wind, that allows us to get down to freezing tomorrow morning again and then we do another complete 180 going in toward the weekend as far as the front coming on through it's not going to do anything other than drop temperatures and windy conditions no clouds even obviously no rain associated with it there's a lot going on up to the north of us but all that stays well up there uh, to the north of us unfortunately now we will start off with clear skies tomorrow then the clouds move back on in here very quickly throughout the day tomorrow and temperatures are actually going to be 
holding steady or going up into Saturday. There is the chance for a couple little sprinkly showers around late tomorrow evening and during the day Saturday, maybe a 20% chance for some rain. So unfortunately, it's not going to be a uh, good rain shot with this one. 65 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies and then temperatures will be dropping down. Windy conditions. So even if you don't need a jacket at noon, keep it handy. It'll be definitely chilly later on this afternoon. And then tomorrow we get down to freezing up to 53. That's it tomorrow. Temperatures stay steady overnight pretty much into Saturday. A couple of showers here and there. Warm and humid this weekend. A low of only 60 on Sunday. And then another front moves through, kind of clears us out temporarily and cools us back down next week. Well, I have my winter and summer clothing ready. <laughs> That's Fall and spring, <laughs> just go for broke. Keep it all right. Smart play for everybody. Breathable mm -hmm. fabrics and layers. Yes. Uh, about 10 till 7, 42 degrees. And scams come in all shapes and sizes, but most work the same way. A scammer pretends to be someone you trust and convinces you to give them your money. Tomorrow on GMSA, some best practices for spotting an imposter before they can hurt your wallet. Let's check on that sunrise this morning. All together now. Ooh. That's beautiful. It's very, very nice. We're going to wrap up GMSA after this. Welcome back at 654. So your power bill may be going up. A potential CPS energy rate hike could be approved next week. The utility is asking for an increase that's a little more than 3% of their base rate, as well as a bump in people's fuel adjustment charge. The city council is expected to vote on the issue next Thursday. We'll keep you posted. Let's check out traffic one more time with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, we don't have any good news here for our friends that are traveling through I-10 at ProBand. You can see flashing lights and just a bunch of vehicles that are building up in the back of this scene. Now, we told you about this a few minutes ago and what we're looking at from this trans guide shot looks like there's two vehicles that are possibly involved in this crash and a few lanes are blocked off at this hour. Now well, we see some vehicles moving. If you take a look right over there, it looks like others are just at a complete stop. So we're going to watch this closely, but we're seeing traffic that is moving right through those West Mountain lanes of I-10 at just nine miles per hour. That's right at ProBand Avenue. We're going to watch this one closely, but not the only situation. I-10 westbound at Houston Street. A crash detected there and a third crash not too far from Loop 410 northbound at Rigsby Avenue. It's off to a busy start, but hopefully we'll have some good news weather-wise, Mike. Yeah, it's gorgeous today. And then we got the front moving through about midday. So beautiful sunrise this morning. It is definitely chilly out there. We do have some fog down to the uh, southeast and that dense fog advisory till 8 o'clock for our southeastern counties. 40 right now, freezing in the hill country. We are going to warm up nicely up to 65 at noon. Then the front comes through windy and temperatures will drop down throughout the afternoon. And then we bottom out at freezing again tomorrow morning. Only 53 clouds move in during the day maybe a sprinkle late and then overnight into Saturday temperatures stay steady kind of warm and humid this weekend. So from freezing to warm, humid to clearing out again and cooling down by the first of next week. So. <laughs> and you're still not feeling great about rain chances this uh -oh, weekend no. overall. Not couple, yet. couple showers here and there. It's pretty much going to be Is about he, it. He shrugs. Okay. He's kind of like, eh, yeah. I'll wash my car. <laughs> it's a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If we all do that, then it will oh, rain. Okay. We'll have downpours. That's true. We have a plan. We'll see you back here at nine.